Good afternoon, everybody. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I think the, the previous, uh, previous panel was very, very interesting. I think one of the questions which was asked about was, what was Ayushman's uh, impact which is going to happen? I think the impact uh, is literally in the word called Ayushman. Right, guys? Because the companies need to be really Ayushman and everything ecosystem is coming into an Ayushman perspective. So we'll discuss Ayush about Ayushman a little bit. But I think today, uh, discussion is about digital transformation. Since morning, probably we would have heard the digital or a digital transformation at least 100 times. Many of the panelists, keynote speakers, even when Jadeep started, it is all about care continuum and how digital is invasing the entire process in the healthcare perspective. Now, I'm coming from healthy living, home health care, remote diagnostic. You're talking about elderly care, all of it. This whole digital expanded digital continuum is giving into, you know, let's say digital is also in shopping, in food, and, you know, diet, and absolutely everything which is coming into place, where digital is playing an important role. We are seeing and we are hearing a lot in the healthcare, but we are not seeing an application in the healthcare, especially in India. So, if you can throw some insights, along with telling about CTS as well as what you people are doing, I think it would be great to start our conversation. Sure. So first of all, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for taking the time and uh, being part of the session today. Uh, I think before uh, I talk about uh, my thoughts on digital and analytics and all of that, I think a disclaimer is probably due. Uh, so let me uh, take just a minute and tell you a little bit about uh, what Serious Tech does. So we are about uh, now a 13-year-old company. Uh, we have uh, close to uh, you know, 3,200 uh, technology professionals all working in healthcare. Uh, and uh, the good news is that, you know, we've been in the healthcare business uh, for, as I said, 13 years now, uh, largely focused on the U.S. and European market. And uh, uh, the last uh, decade, decade and a half, uh, have been quite transformational uh, in the way sort of healthcare has uh, evolved and uh, the use of data, healthcare data, healthcare analytics uh, uh, in the Western world. And uh, I understand uh, by virtue of uh, having worked, uh, you know, with 100 plus uh, fairly large uh, healthcare organizations uh, uh, globally, I understand that aspect of, you know, what is happening globally very well. I must say that I'm not an expert on India. And uh, as City of Tech, we actually do uh, almost no business in India. But I live in Mumbai and I live, uh, I've been uh, living in India all my life. So I understand that from a personal context. So... Uh, what I'm very happy to do, and I think what will be most valuable uh, for the group here, is uh, for me to share how I've seen uh, healthcare evolve uh, globally over the course of the last, uh, you know, 15, 20 years. Uh, because uh, there are many things that have happened uh, globally which will be very relevant for the way uh, healthcare and analytics will evolve in India and uh, just uh, what it will take for it to evolve in India. So I'm, I think uh, with that backdrop, I'm going to pass it back to you. Sure. So, uh, just to give you some statistics around. So, digital spend out of the 100, let's say, is around 40%. Compact medical devices, somewhere around 25%. And traditional is still 35%. So, if you see a country like India, largely, we are very reactive in nature. Though we have understood the care continuum, in theory, we are probably talking in the right direction. But in practical aspect, we are not applying to it. You know, from react reactive to proactive, prevention care... All of this, to become a mainstream in India, what are the building blocks of it? Sure. Uh, I think that's a great question. Uh, if you look at what's happened uh, globally, uh, if you uh, go back uh, to about uh, you know, 15 years and ask a very simple question, that what was happened, though, how was healthcare uh, uh, being delivered? And I'm going to use U.S. as an example, but what's true about the U.S. is probably true about half a dozen other countries like the U.S., you'll find that even in the U.S., it was uh, largely uh, a paper-based healthcare. What is paper-based healthcare? Uh, you go to a hospital, a lot of the information, especially clinical information, so I'm not talking about billing and, and uh, more on the revenue and uh, that side of the business, which has been uh, largely automated for the last 20, 30 years, uh, including, you know, if you go to a hospital in India, more often than not, a lot of the billing statements, et cetera, will be electronic. So I'm not even referring to that. I'm referring more on the clinical side of the business. 
what you would find that uh, even 15 years back uh, in Western countries like the US, it was largely manual. And it took a lot of government intervention and change of regulation to literally force hospitals and uh, uh, provider organizations and physicians to be able and mandate them uh, to use electronic medical records. The reason why electronic medical records is important is that they become sort of a foundational components uh, of building a person's uh, clinical history, a person's uh, clinical information record, because without capturing information about me, if I go to a physician office or a doctor's office or I go get admitted into a hospital, if my clinical information is not being aggregated electronically, it becomes very hard for any uh, healthcare organization to start to apply analytics, to be able to apply advanced analytics, and many of the things that uh, we heard, for example, in the panel uh, uh, just before that. So capturing patient information at the point of care electronically is almost a mandatory thing if the society has to really start to transform healthcare. The second thing which is interesting is that the moment you start capturing this information locally, uh, you have to almost mandate, there has to be a government need for interoperability of information. Because like any other commercial organization, a hospital or a physician office would not want to share uh, their customer information with somebody else. So say, for example, I was running uh, any business, doesn't matter, it's in manufacturing or pharma or in, in the healthcare business. I'm very resistant to, hold, uh, to sharing my information about a patient that has come and got admitted into my hospital. Why should I share it with somebody else unless it is not government mandated? So in many countries in the West, it has become very critical for government to put interoperability requirements where a patient getting admitted into a hospital A must be able to get records from the previous hospitals, B, C, D, whatever, for the physician in hospital A to get a complete view of the, the patient's health record. And without a regulatory framework, it is possible that hospital A, B, C, D, if they are different commercial entities, they will have some reluctance in sharing that information. Also, what is important is that unlike many other pieces of information, like, for example, uh, you know, financial information or manufacturing information, the nature of clinical information is very complicated, right? Uh, so, and the simple way to think about that is imagine somebody were to uh, map out my financial health. If somebody had to uh, make a sense of my financial health between 10, 15 variables, right? My bank balance, my credit card balance, the value of my house, my mortgage, a fixed deposit, share value, whatever, you could get a great picture of my financial health. But imagine you want to map out in an electronic patient record my physical health, then I may be a patient of kidney disease, I could be a patient of heart disease, I could be a patient of a, a certain you know, neurological disorder. And in each of these disciplines, and for each of the organs of the body, there are literally hundreds and thousands of pieces of data that need to get stored and they need to get shared across. So until you don't have a standards body, which is mandating how clinical information needs to get uh, moved, number one, stored locally, and then moved from a hospital A to a hospital B to a hospital C, unless you don't put some of these things in place, the clinical information is very hard uh, to move because it largely gets stored locally in proprietary formats. So as a society, if we need to start to transform healthcare, just to summarize, not only do you need to have mandates for hospitals and physicians to capture electronic information, you need to have standards in terms of how that information needs to get stored, and then you need to mandate them to share it with other providers of healthcare to be able to slowly and steadily start to build a much more unified patient record uh, for, on which you can uh, start to track you know, chronic conditions, you can start to track uh, all kinds of disease conditions, and so on and so forth. Otherwise, it is not going to succeed. Okay? Uh, there was a point that was made that there were 350,000 apps, and why is it that only 40 were successful? Okay, so number one, you should look at which of those 40 were successful and what you will find that the vast majority of the 40 were just information apps, right? It will definitely include a WebMD. It will include the Mayo Clinic. It will include the Cleveland Clinic app, which are all simple apps which are just providing information. How many of those 40 out of the 350,000 apps is actually carrying clinical information 
of the patient who's using the app, it will be shocking. It will not even be, in my mind, it will not even be on, on a single hand. And the reason for that is to capture electronic health information and to share it even with the patient, forget different hospitals or different health systems, is a very complicated thing. And, you know, it will require a significant amount of very structured thought process, very structured regulation, a very structured compliance to be able to achieve those objectives. Yeah. So largely, I mean, what you have said is the government intervention and the regulation can play a very important role in bringing this ecosystem together. But if, see, India is a very typical country. All the government hospitals are run by the government, all the private hospitals are run by the private, and I have not seen a point of interaction between the two. And primary reason has been why we see Ayushman coming now, is the access to the primary care, the access to the facilities and so. We are a very large population. And these are very costly affairs. Today, if nobody is having a medical insurance itself, he or she will find it very difficult to get it privately cared. I mean, and then you need to be in, in in kind of a primary care for the government, then you, you know the hassles which are coming. So regulation won't itself bring everything together. I think there is an ecosystem of doctors, private clinics, which are running. There is an ecosystem of investors. Largely, we see, you know, sitting in this room today, we have a lot of discussion around it. And providers. Bringing them together, what would be one thread or one or two, three threads which you think then can bring them together, other than the regulation? So I was a very sobering answer for that. What I've seen in different parts of the world, that unless there is no regulatory framework around it, it doesn't happen. And uh, I think I'll take example uh, of several countries. And what you find is that use of technology uh, to capture clinical information is not something that hospitals and physicians, irrespective of how well-meaning they may be on uh, driving well, uh, care of their patients, they don't want to do it. There is a huge resistance to change. Uh, physicians who are practicing today have been in med school 10, 20, 30 years back. Uh, the way they practice medicine is, been, is changing, but changing the way they were taught and where they practice medicine in the last uh, 10, 20, 30 years is fundamentally different from what uh, the expectation is if you want to move to a truly digital health care model. And the cost of deploying these technologies and uh, the additional uh, legal and uh, financial implications of actually capturing clinical information at the point of care is quite onerous. So for example, I'm a physician and you're a physician. I capture all notes electronically, you don't capture notes electronically. I expose myself to more legal and compliance issues five years from today for a malpractice than you do. Because there are no records that you maintain. I'm maintaining a record of every single patient. So if the health system or if physicians have to move to capturing electronic information and maintaining a history of that information, without the need to do it from a regulatory perspective, I haven't seen that happen anywhere in the world. So it's a little bit of a sobering answer, uh, but uh, you know, I just thought it'll be important for uh, the audience to hear that from me. No, so I think you know, nobody will doubt that when we really talk about patient health, inf health information at the point of care, it is so critical in nature that if I don't know about one thing about you, and you are really sick and ill at that point of time, and that information is not available, then it could be really, you know, other way around, a dangerous point of time. So we understand the importance of it. But the ecosystem is trying to see that if I have access to the information, if I have access to my customers, if I have access to, to my targets, it's my competitive advantage. So am I really trying to protect my competitive advantage, or am I really saying that I am locking the further future opportunity? There has to be a balanced outlook. So what have you seen global versus India? So globally, what we've seen is that unless, uh, so, uh, you know, we work with many organizations. So, you know, Google used to have a platform called Google Health, which they shut down. Uh, Microsoft used to have a platform called Microsoft Health, which they shut down. Uh, Apple, if you look at the next generation of 
uh, the innovation in Apple phones or Apple watches, so what you'll find is one of the biggest areas of innovation is actually in healthcare. You know, they are investing a tremendous amount of money. Even uh, the Android uh, uh, phones, for example, Samsung and others, right? If you look at a lot of their incremental innovation is coming in healthcare. What they're really trying to solve for is any system which requires a consumer to proactively enter data in the system fails after a certain amount of time. So, for example, right? Uh, I don't know how many of y'all have bought a Fitbit or y'all have downloaded a, a healthcare app. And uh, you download an app and then you start putting in all your calorie information. You download your app and you start putting exercise information. What they find is that other than there are some statistics that between 3 to 5% of the population is able to sustain that because they just have, they're so motivated, right? They're health freaks, they're fitness freaks, whatever. For the vast majority, about 95% of the population is just a transient interest. You download something and then after a while you forget or it's just too much of an effort to, uh, to continue with it. And therefore, what you find is this very repeatable behavior. Hey, I saw this great app. I'm going to download this app. I'm going to use it. And then after a month, you ask the individual, hey, when was the last time you logged in? And it was, hey, it was like three weeks back because you use it for a week. No, so, so, so I'll just come back to your point. Whatever has to sustain from a healthcare app perspective will sustain if the patient or the consumer doesn't need to put data into it, but data somehow gets into it uh, through some other way. So, for example, I consistently use uh, e-pharmacy. And the e-pharmacy is tracking my behavior, and they know that I'm a diabetic patient. And I know that I'm supposed to take a certain pill every day. And they also know that I've ordered 30 of them. So that should last me a month. On the 35th day, they can send me a reminder saying, this one, you, you bought 30 pills 35 days back now, you've not ordered your pills now, and you, you are supposed to take a pill a day. So I was not required to put in data, but the system knew about my behavior and was able to get back. So what I think is important is things will only succeed if the stuff in the back end is automated enough for it to prompt me any system that rel relies on me as a consumer or as a patient to be proactive about my healthcare has not succeeded globally. So, good. But I would uh, differently take an outlook out of it, right? Walmart has been a retail player for ages, right? Still, Walmart never saw the opportunity in e-commerce initially. Amazon saw it, and Amazon actually break through it. At some point of time, Walmart also thought about, you know, I did the mistake, I should have seen the, jumped over the bag and you know, cross the bridge, move to the e-commerce. So we have now Flipkart being bought by Walmart. A similar situation is right now in the healthcare. Lot of providers are earning heavily through their probably reactive care nature and access to primary care through a hospital. Whereas all digital is talking about how do I take the care out of the hospital and bring it to the home. True? But where, which side is the opportunity bigger? Because for that, I need to share the information. For that, I need to be interoperable. For that, I need to make sure the data and the analytics are being taken care of at a personalization level. And we are talking about personal medicines being created today. But is that a bigger opportunity for me? When do I cross that bridge? Where is that balance going to come across? Taking an example of, let's say, Walmart. I am a large healthcare provider. So, I don't think it's an apples to apples comparison. Um, if you compare healthcare with uh, what's happening in, in e-tailing, I would say the complexity of the business is completely different. Uh, the fact that I went to one site and I bought a, a pair of jeans doesn't impact me going to some other site and buying another pair of jeans, right? But if I go to one site and buy my diabetic drugs, and if I go to another site and buy my diabetic drugs, then I may be overdosing myself, right, in some ways. So, uh, the healthcare problem is far more complicated. It's far more complicated because of the fact that, uh, number one, healthcare data is very complicated. It's far more complicated because uh, the care needs to be uh, coordinated across different entities. So, if I go to my uh, physician, my physician should ideally know 
the fact that I got admitted into a hospital, what kind of drugs I am taking because uh, that were part of my discharge summary. Uh, if I go to a pharmacy, if it was all interconnected, the pharmacy must know what the, uh, what the doctor has prescribed to me. So it is much more, needs to be much more collaborative. E-commerce is a little different. You know, I could go to Flipkart and then I could go to Amazon. I could buy a lot of stuff there. I could buy a lot of stuff there. And there is no real need for interconnectivity. So I'm not sure whether I can fully answer your question in comparative terms. Safe to say that to succeed in healthcare needs a much more collaborative strategy at an ecosystem level. Players are competing with each other. So the ecosystem is not necessarily trying to collaborate. So the question is, what is going to get the system to collaborate? And usually we found that the regulations become a very important aspect of facilitating uh, the collaboration in an otherwise bunch of entities who are working hard to compete against each other. So if I am in Bombay and I go to Hinduja Hospital, then Hinduja Hospital is strictly competing with Leelawati. Leelawati is strictly competing with Bombay Hospital. Bombay Hospital is strictly competing with everybody else. So it is not natural for them to start collaborating unless there is somebody trying to force that collaboration now. Sure. I have a last question. And then if you don't have that collaboration, then a lot of the stuff that you heard today about analytics, around machine learning, around AI, become reasonably, uh, they may be very interesting at a macro level. So for example, I may be running uh, a service like uh, Amina was running to the extent that I am limiting the scope of the data that I'm collecting to my home health visits and creating predictive algorithms for the information that I'm capturing during the home health visits, I think I can use AI and machine learning very effectively. If I'm an e-pharmacy company and I'm relying on predictive algorithms to predict when the next order will come because they know that I'm a diabetic patient and I'm taking 30 pills a month, I think they can do it very effectively. But those are very narrow use cases. The moment it has to be a slightly broader use case, is Rizwan going to is he trending towards being more diabetic or less diabetic? Then to answer that question, they need to be, there needs to be uh, data from the labs, data from the pharmacy, data perhaps from some other locations that need to tie in together. And that is where you get a transformational impact on my health. And you can't achieve that until the data from the different uh, providers that I go to. Uh, is there some way to connect those dots? Yeah. Thank you very much. I think we okay. had three big takeaways. One really talked about transformation and an ecosystem approach, not like other industries where it's an entity approach. Uh, second, everything is about data. So if data can be interportable, it can be stored, can be you know, real-time access, I think it can give a lot of benefit personally from a healthcare perspective as well. And third, I think you talked about without the regulation and the government invasion into it, the processes and standards can't be set, correct? So thank you very much, Isman. It was very grateful, uh, grateful for you to be having here with us. Uh, thank you all for, for attending. To, to all right. Thank, thank you very much. Folks.